Welcome to this short narrated slideshow designed and delivered by the Met Hub as an aid for professionals completing the serif. The serif we use has been adapted from Bernardo's sexual exploitation tool and now includes indicators specific to CCE. From September 2020, the serif started to be used across all four local authority areas in Hampshire, enabling a streamlined response across the county. We're going to look at some best practice guidance on completing the serif scoring and subsequent actions and touch on other tools available. It's important that a serif is completed as soon as any potential concerns regarding child exploitation are identified. This could be following a missing episode, a change of peer group or an arrest for a drug related offence. There are many indicators of child exploitation and it's important to note that while some are more common, there's no definitive list and with many local authorities using various screening tools, there's a diverse range of indicators being used across England and Wales to identify child exploitation. We also know that the way that children are groomed and exploited changes rapidly and this is why we continually ask you to use your professional judgment. The serif can be completed by any professional working with children and is most effective when co-produced with other professionals and involving both the parent, carer and the child themselves. The serif not only helps to identify exploitation but it's a guide to effective interventions and so it should be considered a live document rather than a tick box exercise. The serif should be reviewed every three months or following a significant incident or change of circumstances. And it's really important as professionals, as I previously said, that we use our own judgment and that we're mindful of our use of language. Following completion of the beginning of the serif, which asks you to add the child's details and your own details, you will come to the first section of indicators, which is the low risk indicators or vulnerabilities. So in this section, we're asking you to think about whether these factors have increased the child's vulnerability to exploitation. The serif guidance that's available gives you really useful areas to think about for each different vulnerability. So for example, in breakdown of family relationships, it asks you to think about whether a breakdown may have caused the child to avoid going home or seeking a sense of belonging elsewhere. There's no time frame included here because we're asking you to consider each factor and their relationship with the child's vulnerability as opposed to whether it exists now. Each vulnerability has a score of one. The next section is medium risk indicators and this section of the serif includes indicators that are associated with the risk of or that may indicate abuse through sexual or criminal exploitation. You'll notice that there's a time frame and we ask you to only tick these if they've been present during the past three months or are current now. Again, the serif guidance has areas to think about for each indicator and it is really useful to refer to these throughout. So, for example, when we look at regularly staying out, we ask whether the child's demonstrating a pattern of staying out late or if there's been, been a recent change. Um, perhaps they're just pushing boundaries or is it indicative of something slightly more concerning? Uh, another example to think about is drug and alcohol misuse and considering whether their substance use is beyond more common teenage experimentation. Uh, are drugs and alcohol being supplied to the child as part of the grooming process? And does the substance given reduce the child's capacity to keep safe? Underneath this box is an area for you to give evidence of the medium risk indicators. And we ask that you include evidence for each indicator that you tick and as much information as possible. So to expand on the example of drug and alcohol use, we might ask you to think about how the child is accessing or funding the substance, who is supplying it to them, are there indications of dependency or increasing dependency, and could they be accruing a debt? It would be useful to have an indication of all the substances that are being used. Um, and remember that this particular area is about the child's indicators as opposed to substance use within the family. The next area of the serif to complete is the high risk indicators. So these indicators have been selected because they're prevalent in cases where children and young people are at risk of or are being abused through sexual 
criminal exploitation. In order to monitor change in risk over time, either as a result of intervention or a change in circumstances, it's important to know whether the risk indicator is current or recent. And that's why there are two boxes beside each indicator, one for if it's been present between three and six months ago, and one if the indicator is still present now. So you can tick either, tick either box or you can tick both. So for each indicator, there will be a maximum score of six. So the guidance, again, is really useful to refer to, as with every other area, it breaks down each indicator asking you to consider certain things to help you complete this as effectively as possible. So when we look, for example, at periods of going missing overnight or longer, it asks you to think about uh, details of when and what is known about who they've stayed with. Uh, you are asked to think about whether they've been traveling out of area, uh, found in another area with no obvious link, because this could be indicative of um, county lines risks and trafficking. And it's also important to provide details of how often this has occurred and the duration of missing periods, as well as any other known details. So it may be that there are occasions when a child goes missing overnight and it's completely unrelated to exploitation. However, it is probably still quite appropriate to include this within the serif because it's always important to consider it as a, an indication of exploitation. As with the medium risk indicators, there's uh, another box underneath this serif and um, this box is easily expanded so you can put as much evidence in as possible. And so for each indicator that you've ticked, please do ensure that you add as much information. And one of the really important things within this is even though we have ticked whether they're present between three and six months ago or present now, to include dates is really crucial on building that picture of what that child might be experiencing. Once you have completed the low, medium and high risk indicators and provided as much evidence as possible in the boxes underneath, you'll be asked to give a total score. In order to do this, you simply add the scores for each together. Remember, one point for low, medium and high risk indicators present between three and six months ago and five points for current high risk indicators or those that have been present in the last three months. For any child aged under the age of 13 with at least one high risk indicator, you would add an extra five points onto the total score. So by this stage, you have collected all the information that you need from multiple sources and used this to complete the low, medium and high risk indicators and put evidence of such in the boxes underneath. And you will also have a total score for the serif. So the next part of the assessment is the protective factors and strengths. The presence of protective measures may reduce the level of concern about current risks or a lack of them may heighten the concern further. You might think about whether the child has any positive relationships with protective adults or supporting professionals, or whether they have any sustained access to positive peer relationships or involvement in diversionary and positive activities. There may be some ongoing work with the parents and positive parental oversight and there could be some community action which um, disrupts some of the risk. So just underneath here, we ask you to include the child's view and perception of risks and safety and the parent and carer's views. So these are vitally important to help us to consider what impact this has on the child's level of safety and perhaps whether the risks were present but have now reduced. So does the child recognise the exploitation? Does the parent recognise the risks? And is the parent taking as all appropriate protective steps? And if they are, is this having any impact? Or is any parental lack of action increasing the exploiter's access to the child? It's really important that we listen to the parent carer's views here. Um, and also listen to the child's views. Listening to their views will help us to understand how they are currently framing their own exploitation. And this will enable us to pitch our intervention at a level that is actually effective for them. 
You'll notice that then you're asked to list any relationships, peer groups, locations or settings that you think may be linked to the exploitation risk. And again, as much detail as possible here, because this will enable us to um, create a safety plan and consider any action that's needed to increase the child's safety. Once you have completed the previous areas of the serif, you will come to the scoring and professional judgment box. So here you're asked to determine the risk level to the child. So you'll notice that for each risk level, you are given a scoring guideline. And this is because your professional judgment is more important. So the information that you've gathered in relation to risk indicators, child and parent care reviews, and the protective and safety factors will assist in forming a narrative around what may be happening to the child and the level of exploitation risk they may be exposed to. So you could, for example, have a serif score of 11, but one high risk indicator that is significant in relation to child exploitation risk in your professional opinion. And this is where you would include this view. So remember, the risk level is not determined by the score. The score is a guideline and it is your professional judgment that is crucial in identifying exploitation risk. It's important when we consider exploitation risks that we are also alert to the potential that a child might have been a victim of trafficking or modern day slavery. So once you've stated your professional view of the level of risk posed to the child and whether you believe the primary risk to be CCE or CSE, you'll be prompted to consider whether there are reasonable grounds to suspect the child may have been trafficked or a victim of forced labour. If there is reason to believe they have, this is a child protection issue and needs referring into the multi-agency safeguarding hub or raising with the child's social worker if one is already allocated. Together, Children's Services and Police will make a decision whether an NRM should be completed. This decision will usually be made following a strategy meeting so that all the relevant information can be gathered. Unlike a serif, only designated professionals are authorised to refer a potential victim of modern slavery into the NRM. For children, this is most commonly children's social care professionals or police. Details of who qualifies as a first responder are available through the following link. And as you were first asked for referrer details, you won't be able to progress with completing the NRM unless you are recognised as such. So once you have completed the serif, you can refer to the risk categories and the associated actions alongside. So you'll find this at the bottom of the serif document itself, and this is a useful guide to understand what action needs to be taken next. So this concludes the information included within this presentation around completing the serif, and we will now move on to explore the community partnership information form. So the CPI form is really useful in order to enable us to gather information that helps build a picture of local issues and potential areas of concern. So as with every document around contextual safeguarding, including the serif, we ask you to put as much information as possible within the CPI. So names, nicknames, car details, um, mobile numbers, even I. IMEI numbers of mobile phones. Uh, this form gets sent to the police. The information is at the top of the form to guide you and it is then cleansed, sanitised and shared with relevant partners. Uh, the CPI is a really useful tool. Uh, we rely on them heavily within the Met Hub and within our partners to get a picture of what might be happening and where to concentrate intervention within the community. That concludes this short presentation on the serif. I'd urge you to contact METHUB on the email address below if you have any further questions relating to this topic. Thank you.